He, what he says is, don't be content with simply doing wudu. There are Muslims now, when they go into the, the, the bathroom, it's just this quick thing, and, and they see it as something they have to do before they do wudu. My own teacher, Murabtar Haj in the Sahara, I used to do wudu next to him, and he, on average, would take about 10 minutes to do wudu. It was really quite extraordinary to watch him do wudu. And I realized from his wudu that for him it was an act, act of ibadah. He was not simply doing a ritual. He was actually experiencing because we know that the Prophet ﷺ said, when you rinse your mouth, the sins of your tongue flow out with the water. In the Shafi'i Madhab, the water of wudu is considered polluted. You can't actually use it. You have to dump it, water plants with it, but you can't drink it or use it because it, it's, it's polluted by the sins that have been washed away. And so Imam al-Ghazali is arguing that there are secrets to purification. And he says that when the Prophet said, At-Tahur Shatur al-Iman, purification is half of this religion. He said, do not think that he is talking about this water ritual that we do. He is talking about purifying the heart. This is, this is what he's talking about. And this is only symbolic of that purification. And, and he talked about a man, the Prophet ﷺ said, what do you say about a man who lives beside a river and bathes in the river five times a day? Will you see any filth on him? And they said, certainly not, Ya Rasulullah. And he said, this is like the man who washes himself and then prays five times a day. This is what he is doing. In other words, what the outward washing is to the body, the inward reality is to the soul. And, and then he argues about prayer and what the purpose of prayer is. He says prayer is entering into the presence. And the reason that you say Allahu Akbar is you are pushing this world away from you and putting it behind you and you are entering into a state of presence with your Lord. And then he says you begin Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Praise be to the Lord of the worlds, the merciful, the compassionate. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Mediki Yomi Deen, the Sovereign of the Day of Judgment, or the Master of the Day of Judgment. And then you speak directly. This is in Arabic called Iltifat, where you move from a, a third person tense, what they call Khitab Al-Ghaib, to Khitab Al-Hadir, where you move from speaking to somebody who's absent to speaking to somebody who's present. Iyaka Na'abudu, to you alone we worship. Iyaka Nasta'in, to you alone. We seek help. That this is, he says, this is what the Fatiha is. It's to enter into the presence of your Lord. It's not just to go through these motions, uh, this perfunctory act that you have to do five times a day. That this is about coming to intimate discourse with your Lord. And then you speak to your Prophet directly. As-salamu alayka, ayyuhan nabi. Peace be upon you. That's not salamu alayhi, as-salamu alayka, because you understand that there is a spiritual presence. There's a spiritual presence. The Prophet ﷺ said, تُعْرَضُ عَلَيَّ عَمَالُكُمْ I see your actions. This is a sahih hadith in Al-Bazaar. I see your actions in the grave. فَإِذَا وَجَدْتُ خَيْرًا حَمِدْتُ اللَّهِ وَإِذَا وَجَدْتُ شَرًا أَسْتَغْفَرْتُ لَكُمْ If I see good, I praise God that these are my people that I taught them to do good and they're doing good. And if I see you doing wrong, I ask forgiveness. He doesn't curse us. He doesn't say, why aren't they doing good? He asks forgiveness for us. Mm -hmm.